Thank you for coming this morning. I'm Jacob Tennyson, and I'm going to discuss a sex chromosome genesis, the repeated translocation in strawberries. First, I'd like to acknowledge the funding agencies and collaborators that made this work possible, uh, especially my co-authors, Aaron Liston, Teal and Ashman, Nawe, Raju and Rajalu, and Shannon Straub. Diacy, the coexistence of males and females, occurs across the tree of life, but shows remarkable di uh, diversity in its genetic underpinnings. Different species have different parts of their genomes controlling sex. And there's still a lot we don't understand about this widespread and frankly bizarre phenomenon that separate sexes exist at all. Uh, for example, do species with different sex chromosomes represent entirely independent evolutionary lineages or movement of conserved sex determining sequences? Why is it adaptive? Not only to give up hermaphroditism in the first place, but to subsequently modify the genetic basis for sex. And what specific genes and mechanisms are involved? Especially in plants, for which few sex determining loci have been fine mapped, we know little about exactly how and why sex chromosomes first emerge in diversified. But strawberries, genus Fregaria, are an excellent system for answering these questions because uh, separate sexes just evolved recently in this octoploid clade. Uh, the octoploids include several subspecies of Fregaria virginiana and Fregaria chiloensis, which have hybridized to form the cultivated strawberry that we all know and love, as well as a natural hybrid Fregaria ananasa cunifolia. And across this octoploid clade, Genetic control of sex, well, genetic control of sex maps to different places in the genome, but always inherited maternally, consistent with ZW sex determination. So there are seven haploid Fregaria chromosomes. The octoploids have two copies of all seven in each of four subgenomes: A, B, B, I, B1, and B2. And in a linkage cross with Fregaria virginiana and virginiana, uh, sex determination was mapped to the start of chromosome 6 on subgenome B2. But in three crosses of Fregaria chiloensis and in a cross with uh, the hybrid cunifolia, it maps to the other end of chromosome 6 on subgenome AB. In Fregaria virginiana platypedala and in other cunifolia, we see yet another sex determining region in the middle of chromosome 6 and on yet another uh, subgenome. So we have this polymorphism. Either you can make viable fertile anthers, like on the left, or you can't, like on the right. It shows consistent Mendelian inheritance, uh, ZW, uh, maternal inheritance, uh, but inconsistent genomic position. And so we want to know, well, first of all, what are these female-specific sequences, these dominant alleles defining the W chromosome? What, what genes do they contain? Uh, how large are the regions in perfect linkage disequilibrium with sex? And are they homologous across taxa, despite having different genomic positions? So to answer these, we took a brute force approach based on 31 MERS. We examined five taxa of octoploid fregaria from across the North American range, three taxa with Nine, to, or nine females and eight to 11 male fertile plants, and then two bonus taxa with just three samples in our analysis each. And these included many of the same parents that had been previously used in linkage map crosses. So we sequenced their complete genomes at 30 to 40 X coverage relative to the haploid reference, and then we used jellyfish to identify all unique 31 base pair sequences in the reads. 31 being the largest size that software could handle at the time. And um, for the three well-sampled taxa, we then identified W-specific 31 MERS, those seen in all females and never in any male fertile plants. And we also looked for those in the, the two bonus taxa, and then we uh, assembled the reads containing those W-specific 31 MERS into larger contents. So for all taxa, we saw hundreds of these W-specific 31 MERS. We saw the most for Fregaria chiloensis, 
even though that was the species with the most male fertile plants in our analysis, which should reduce the number of false positives. So that was the first taxon we characterized in detail. If you align these 1,528 uh, W-specific 31 mers from Gregaria chiloensis to the reference genome, you can see several spikes. Uh, in particular, you see spikes at positions 1 million, 13 million, and 37 million on chromosome 6, the same places where sex determination has been mapped across the various taxa. So in other words, in Gregaria chiloensis, all females and no males must all share a haplotype that contains sequence uh, homologous to these three portions of the reference genome. So if you look at chromosome 6 here with these three previously mapped uh, sex determining regions, we can zoom in on the portion where we had previously mapped sex in Gregory Choloensis in, in a linkage cross, and we can zoom in from there into the region containing these W-specific 31 groups. In other words, the region in perfect linkage disequilibrium with sex. But most of the W specific 31 mers aren't there in this, in this portion that's homologous to the 37 million position. Instead, a haplotype of over 20 KB has been inserted here. And that's actually the main unique feature of the W chromosome. This haplotype contains sequence homologous to all three previously identified sex determining portions of, of chromosome 6 on 1 million, at, at, at 13 million, and at 37 million and as well as some additional sequence. It accounts for most of the W-specific 31 mers in Fregaria choloensis, especially once we add in uh, that adjacent sequence. And we can annotate six putative coding genes on this haplotype, as well as a 23 base pair diagnostic deletion, which is notable because it's seen in all females across all the taxa, not just Fregaria choloensis, with the exception of two Fregaria virginiana glauber females. Uh, so that was interesting, and so we proceeded to examine uh, the sequence surrounding this nearly universal diagnostic deletion uh, across all five of our taxa. And you build a phylogeny of this conserved W-specific sequence, <laughs> and it forms three main clades, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma, that don't perfectly reflect taxonomy. Uh, Fregaria choloensis is monophyletic within gamma, while Fregaria virginiana is spread across the three clades regardless of subspecies. Uh, but if you look at the females that have actually been mothers in our linkage crosses, shown with these blue boxes, you can see that each clade is associated with a unique linkage map position. Alpha with position 1 million, beta with 13 million, and gamma with 37 million. Um, and notably, beta and gamma are sister to each other, while alpha with its associated 1 million position uh, for the, the sex determining region is, is basic. So using these clades, we can then uh, construct haplotypes for Bregaria virginiana as well. And uh, you can see that the beta clade sequence is quite similar to the Bregaria chiloensis sequence, but it lacks any sequence homologous to the 37 million position. And the alpha clade sequence is even smaller, and it lacks any sequence homologous to the 13 million position, seen in the other clades. In fact, this alpha clade sequence is very similar to the Z chromosome at position 1 million, which we happen to have from back sequencing, uh, even though we unfortunately didn't get the W from our back sequencing. Um, and so both the phylogenetic evidence and the presence, absence of sequence homologous to different portions of the reference genome are consistent with the following scenario. The sex determining sequence evolved at position 1 million in Fregaria virginiana, where it can still be observed in the alpha clade. It then translocated to position 13 million, uh, bringing along some souvenir sequence from its previous location, and where it can still be observed in the beta clade. Then it translocated again, bringing along souvenir sequence from both of its previous locations, and ending up at position 37 million, which is now fixed in the gamma clade, including all of Fregaria choloensis. And interestingly, uh, Fregaria choloensis, with its, its longer hook, with its longer gamma uh, haplotype, tends to have more sexual dimorphism than Fregaria virginiana, which more often has these shorter haplotypes. Now, this, uh, this shared sequence that's actually present in all three clades only contains two coding genes. 
One of them is uh, 60S ribosomal protein. This is a new retrogene inserted on the W and absent on the Z. Uh, we don't know yet if it's functional, but maybe it somehow throws a monkey wrench into the development of anther or, uh, or pollen. Uh, the other gene is a GDP mannose 3 5 epimerase, and this same gene actually has been implicated in uh, both fruit and pollen development in strawberries as well as other fruits uh, like tomatoes. Uh, it is present on the Z, although in the uh, beta and gamma clades, the W specific copy has a premature stop phono that uh, likely affects its function. So we can't say for sure which of these genes is causal. Uh, it might be both. In fact, classic models of sex chromosome evolution predict two closely linked genes, one controlling female function, the other controlling male function. Well, why is the sequence translocated repeatedly across chromosome 6? Uh, the null hypothesis is just that it's uh, neutral genomic rearrangement, uh, but sex chromosome turnovers like this are so common that an adaptive explanation is warranted. So it could be escaping genetic load. Uh, deleterious mutations closely linked to the sex-determining region could build up if reduced recombination prevents females from eliminating them, or if the W just has a low effective population size, perhaps if low-fruiting ZZ hermaphrodites occasionally outnumber females. Alternatively, instead of escaping something harmful, it could be moving towards something advantageous. A low side under sexually antagonistic selection could benefit from tight linkage to the sex-determining region, and maybe that drives translocation. We're also considering another hypothesis we call move block grow, which is that translocation per se is adaptive, regardless of where you go, because it locks more sequence into perfect linkage with sex, and it allows the W-specific haplotype to grow. Uh, each jump brings along more souvenir sequence, increasing the hemozygous region. So, as far as the evolution of DIAC in the big picture, it's conservative, we didn't find three unrelated sex-determining genes, we found the same sequence getting recycled. Uh, it's dynamic, these repeated translocations show that there's uh, dramatic restructuring even in the earliest stages of sex chromosome evolution, and it's constructive. We see the W growing in size, uh, locking in more genes, perhaps contributing to increased sexual dimorphism. So the take-home messages are that there's a shared locus determining sex across octopoid for the area, but with a shifting genomic location. But it's so small we can instantly narrow it down to two candidate genes, which is quite remarkable, uh, remarkable because most older sex chromosomes have a much larger non recombining region. It's harder to figure out what in there is, is functionally important. And this story we can reconstruct, uh, that we can reconstruct uh, where repeated jumps bringing pieces of each location onto the next location uh, is quite remarkable, not only because it lets us reconstruct the history to a degree that is rarely possible for sex chromosomes, but also it suggests that this kind of translocation mechanism might be an important way for incipient sex chromosomes to differentiate. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think, uh, like, um, go back to this the thing here. Um, basically, well, there's a lot. There's a lot here um, because so this is for Fregarii um Basically. 
Um, if you look at the haplotype uh, here, it's saying that these, these, um, these sections that are homologous to position 13 million have a lot of unique sequence. Basically, they've, they've, got, they've undergone a lot of substitutions that, you know, they're still homologous uh, sequence at position 13 million in Brigeri chelowensis, but these have unique SNPs that, that distinguish them. Whereas this whole region surrounding uh, 37 million, there's probably, there's probably still some recombination here at around 37 million because you know, there's no recombination in the hemizygous region because right here this is nothing to recombine with. But as soon as you get to being homologous to 37 million, you can recombine with the Z chromosome potentially. And so there's fewer of these that are homologous to 37 million that are truly W-specific because they can occasionally, I think, recombine with the Z once you get outside of the, of the hemizygous region. Um, and as far as why there aren't more here in the position in the, in the section that's homologous to, to 1 million, um, there just aren't that many. I don't, I don't know. There's, there's just more of them here because there have been more substitutions in these, in these sections. And I guess I don't know for sure why. Have you explored the other yeah, well, so in, so this, yeah, uh, basically here's, this section right here is homologous to a portion of chromosome four. Um, and I didn't talk about that, but that might be a, a signature of, a, of another, yet another previous uh, sex determining region location that we just haven't uh, you know, seen in a linkage cross before. So yeah, so there might be more that we don't know about. And then this retrogene, this thing is inserted on the W and is, and is um, not seen on the Z, and its autosomal paralogs are on uh, chromosome seven and chromosome five, and so we see some spikes aligning there from from this thing. So that's that's explains the other main spikes. I don't know if you mentioned this at the beginning. I actually can't remember, but is is this octoploid for Garrett uh, to Palo? It's it is it's it's yeah. Um, yeah it, it has. Three diploid, at least three diploid ancestors. Okay. Basically, um, the reference genome that we use is uh, derived from Fregaria vesca, which um, is closely related to this AB subgenome. And then these three, the BI is from is close to another diploid, and these two are similar to BI but different enough that they seem to have come from another extinct diploid. So yeah, I, mean, I, I guess I don't know how the uh, It's 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 a very diploidized genome though. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so mostly um, the different subgenomes are doing their own thing and um, the exomic inheritance. Okay. Um, so yeah. So even though we don't think that this is you know this this one that's on B two seems to stay on B two and is probably not recombining with the other subgenomes okay. to, to much, although maybe occasionally. 